Hello everyone and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon and uh, today we are joined by one of my very close best friends so Austin hello guys hello so I did find someone <laughs> who was generous enough to offer to read some of the male voices and stuff because Lord knows I struggle with that so yeah I'm gonna be there for a nice uh, a voice break and yes. do some nice male voices yeah uh, <laughs> so I guess we'll start like here let me move my phone that's very unprofessional okay so we're gonna pick up right where we left off and Austin has watched the series up to this point so he knows what's going on for the most part uh, I might have to explain a few things here and there um but yeah shouldn't be too big of a deal so you ready I'm ready let's get started okay so this little kid's wrinkling my dress so I'm gonna go ahead and remove his hand so I reach down to pry the boy's hand off my skirt, but the boy moves faster than me. The moment I pull his hand away, he quickly refastens his grip, this time around my hand. H hey The boy doesn't move his hand. In fact, he hol or his holds only tightens, so much so that I find it impossible to pull my hand away. There's no way I can make him let go without causing a scene. Now I'm going to be stuck holding the hand of a little boy I do not know until the end of this show. How did this happen? Darkness spread over the village. The people began to suffer. They forgot what happiness felt like. One villager decided to leave and find a good witch that would help save everyone from the evil witch. The villager knew it would be very dangerous, for if he were discovered, the evil witch would certainly kill him and his family. Okay, I can't stop smiling. It's so nice not to do the male voice. <laughs> Thank you again. Okay. No, you're welcome. But the man knew he had to try if he ever wanted to see the other villagers smile again. Many days later, the man finally returned with a good witch whose heart was as filled with light as the evil witch's was filled with darkness. Ooh, I like the pauses. That's nice. That's a nice added bonus. The good witch, unable to bear the sight of the villager suffering, decided to help him. She cast a powerful spell that would send the evil witch away and save the village at the cost of her own life. Once the spell was cast, the darkness disappeared from the village. To this day, the people of the village are said to carry the good witch's light within them. And everyone lived happily ever after. And just a slight heads up, guys. There is a little bit of lag in the recording. Um, so his his voice might become like a second or two later than what's on the screen. But that's okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, aren't all witches... Okay, you got this. But aren't all witches evil? Aw. That's simply not true. I've met a good witch, one with a heart more light and loving than any fairies. More of the children begin to ask questions. I sigh, unable to do anything except wait while Waltz is bombarded with questions. Thank you. The boy that took my hand gives it one last squeeze before running off to join his friends. Aww. What did he thank me for? Once the audience finally leaves, Waltz comes out from behind the booth and smiles up at me. The show was a success. <laughs> yes! Princess? There was a boy. He thanked me, even though I did nothing for him. The little boy who was with you, but you did do something. You held his hand. Oh, he noticed. I did not want to. I realized that when I saw the annoyed look on your face. Oh my god. It would have been good of you to do it if you'd meant to calm him down. What? That boy was really frightened by the evil witch in the show. Aww. He thanked you because you held his hand and stayed with him when he was scared. Sometimes just having someone beside you when you're afraid is enough. 
Having someone beside you. I think back on all the times I felt scared. Mother always told me to hide my fear and to never cry because it always made me appear weak. I could never ask her for help and the king was never there for me. Every time I was afraid, I was always alone. I shake off the memories and realize that Waltz is asking me a question. What did you think of the show? It was short and simple. That's it? I created that entire show, you know. Story, characters, everything. Aww. It could have been better. You wound me. I have nothing more to say and Walt seems disheartened by my silence. You always complimented my stories, even when they were silly. Walt's telling me stories. I do not recall such a thing. He makes it sound as if we've known each other for a long time. Before I can ask him for clarification, he changes the topic. Do you mind accompanying me to the toy shop before we head back? Do I have a choice? Waltz's lips quirk with a smile as he picks up his materials. You might have fun, princess. Come on. This is a shop I went to before I was cursed. Feel free to look around, princess. I won't be too long. I nod at him before walking over to the doll display. The dolls here are actually beautiful. But with the gold I have left, I wouldn't be able to afford even one. I miss my dolls. Papa, I want that one! The sound of a little girl's voice draws my attention. I look around the store before spotting a little girl pointing to a big teddy bear. She looks expectantly at the man beside her. That must be your father. The man shakes his head, his eyes fill with regret. Aww. We can't afford that one, dear. I love how you just know that you're doing all the boy voices now. It's great. Could you choose something else? The girl looks like she's on the verge of bawling. I back away, fearing the child might throw a tantrum. Instead, she rubs at her eyes before looking up at her father with a slow smile. I understand. The man smiles and pats her head. Thank you for understanding, sweetheart. You're being so grown up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow, my voice got really, really, you know, like. <laughs> I only need you and Mama to be happy. I love you, Papa. I love you, too. Okay, I didn't do it that time. The king has never once told me that he loved me. He must be better off without me. Oh, Do I even belong in the palace anymore? Papa, look! The king! The moment I hear her say his title, I quickly rush from the toy stop. Toy stop. Toy store. Hail the king. Long live the king! Hail King Gen Janario? How would you say that? Uh, Gennaro? Gen Gen uh, <laughs> Gennaro? I don't know. Gennaro? I'll just go with Gennaro. He is the first one I see, mounted on his favorite white stallion as he waves at everyone. I spot Ophelia, Rod, and Emmy with him, mimicking his motions. The king used to invite me to join him before, but I always declined. He always went out alone. Once a month, the king sets out to check on the conditions of the kingdom in person. It is his way of bonding with the townsfolk. So, real quick, I just realized that I probably shouldn't have eaten before recording this. <laughs> so, that's oh, it's doing wonders for the voice right now. That probably helps it. Oh, Dude yeah. Better. I definitely don't feel slightly burpy, which is very attractive. Um, the Order of Caldera trails behind the royal family with Sir Alcaster at the head. But there's one particular person that is missing. It's strange that Fritz isn't here. The parade is an impressive sight. The crowd lining the streets becomes denser with each passing second. I weave around the mass of people and attempt to get closer to the king. Thank you, everyone. He is smiling, a true smile. I've never seen him with a smile, or I've never seen him smile like that at me. A heaviness begins to weigh down on my heart. Suddenly it becomes harder to breathe. Please look this way. Please look at me. 
The king is looking happier these days, isn't he? I don't think I've ever seen him so joyful. It must be his family. Happier. All I want is for the king to look at me, to see me. But he does not so much as glance my way once. I stare at the ground with bleary eyes. He's happier without me. I return to the toy shop with a heavy heart, the little girl from earlier standing with her father by the door. He ruffles her hair before holding his hand out to her with a smile. She takes it with a giggle, and the two walk off together. A hot ache see or sings through my blood as I watch them leave. Is this... Jealousy. I reach up and clutch at my chest. My heartbeat feels painful. This is a terrible feeling. Princess? Jesse? I stare at Waltz, temporarily stunned by the fact that he called me by my name, not by my title. Are you okay? Despite myself, I find my eyes drawn back to the little girl and her father as they stand just outside the door to the toy shop. Princess? Um... I mean, I guess we could say that we're not okay, but... Yeah, um... I think, I think we're fine. I don't think we want to go into it at this point, yeah? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. I hope that was the right thing. You don't look fine to me at all. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the little girl and her father as they disappear into the crowd outside the toy shop. I am. You still act tough, even though you're hurting inside. I am not... Here. Oh. What is this for? In case you suddenly feel like crying. I'm not going to cry. I am not that weak. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot it was me. Uh, Waltz frowns when I do not take the handkerchief from him. He puts it back into his pocket with a shake of his head. Crying doesn't make you weak, princess. We did it! We did the right choice. I'm proud. As soon as you see that little diamond thing up in the corner, that's when you know we did the right thing. Okay. Okay. Waltz's gaze moves to the set of teddy bears displayed on one of the shelves. He is quiet for a moment before he speaks. He's affected- Oh, shit. Sorry. Oh. oh, my voice, my voice cracked. <laughs> He's affected by the curse. Whoops. What? The king. He can't remember you because of the curse. That doesn't mean he never cared about you. Oh. Sorry. That's the reason you look so down, right? I was looking outside. I saw the way you looked at him. Does he know that it's rude to stare? Oh, and how did I look? Hurt. I turn away before Waltz can see the frustration on my face. He loves you, you know. More than you'll ever know. Now how would you know that? You don't know him at all. Everyone has their own ways of, of expressing their love. I'm sure he has his own ways. By not being there when I needed him, he has never acted like a father to me. Princess. Don't pretend to know what my life, uh, don't pretend to know what my life at the palace was like, Walt. This conversation is over. Let us return to the merchant. Mm. Aww. Ah, another dream. Look at what I drew. Jesse, you know you're not meant to be in here. But I drew this picture of us. See, that is mother and me. And you're holding mother's hand. Go play somewhere else, Jesse. I'm busy. But you're always busy, father. I just want to. Go to your mother. I'm sure she is looking for you. Okay. Oh, that was depressing. God. Yeah, I know. I felt sad. Aw. You, you, well, you know my artistic skills. That was something I would draw. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. 
<laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. I am vaguely aware of the moonlight in my room when I sit up in my bed, heart beating painfully fast. What was I dreaming about? It felt like I was dreaming about the king, but why now? A few days have already passed since I last saw him. I fall back onto the bed. I close my eyes and once again attempt to sleep, but it hovers stubbornly out of my reach. What was that? Sorry guys, I don't have like the sound recording for this game, so like... I was trying to figure out how to record Discord, so some of the sound didn't capture right. So I'm just gonna add like some smooth jazz or something in the background for this video. I should hopefully figure it out by maybe like... Next week? But uh, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, who could be making that noise at this time of night? I step out of my bed and head outside to investigate. There is no one here. The sound is coming from the tavern. Uh, what do you think we should do? I mean, I don't know. Horror movies have taught me well. Yeah, I feel like we shouldn't check, but then I feel like if we just go back to bed. Yeah, we gotta God, progress the check. plot somehow. I wanna check. I mean, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's check it out. <laughs> I slowly turn a knob and open the door. Hello? Oh god, it's a broom. <laughs> did you see- you saw this episode, right, with the broom? I did, and I'm terrified. Yes, rightfully so. The broom begins to hop towards me. I begin to back away. It's the middle of the night, there's no way I'm gonna sweep now. But the broom just hops past to cower behind me. Aw. That's some broom you got there. Waltz, what are you doing here? I couldn't sleep, so I decided to continue working on some of my puppets. But I accidentally stepped on the broom, and it went berserk. Aww. Ugh. I turn around and grab Mr. Broom, leaning it against its designated spot on the wall. But why are you here? I heard a sound. As no, curious as always, that's going to get you in trouble, you know. I don't need to be lectured by you. Mm -hmm. I apologize for waking you up. You should go back to sleep. I would not be here if I could sleep. I might as well stay for a while. If that's what you want. Waltz turns back to his puppets on the table. He leans down over the puppets, checking their seams. Since you're here, I think you can help me. Help you? <gasps> oh my god! Austin, do you know where that's from? I think I do. Tangled. Oh my gosh, yeah. The Rapunzel? <laughs> yeah! Yeah. yeah. I think we watched yeah. that movie together, actually. I think I dragged you into that. Well, yeah, it was, I was, uh, that was a good movie. I liked it. Was it was good. It was good. That's the right thing to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of my newest puppet? <laughs> it's oddly familiar. I look at Waltz with surprise. With his eyes so wide and his lower lip jutting out, he looks almost like a puppy begging for a treat. Oh. Is he expecting a compliment on the puppet? Well, I look closely at the puppet's eyes. It looks evil. Really? I'm glad to hear that. It's going to be the villain in my next show. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you for the help, Princess. I'm glad that my mentor approves. Mentor? Waltz well, doesn't answer. That's it? Indeed. I only offered an opinion, but he looks so happy. What a weird person. Waltz well, resumes his sewing in silence. He is very talented to be able to sew such a complicated animal. He probably has been doing this for a long time to be so skilled. Possibly even longer than I expect, considering the nature of his curse. You look like you've got something on your mind, princess. Well, you never actually told me how to break your curse. Ah, I guess I haven't. Waltz well, clears his throat as he goes back to his sewing. I need to find Tinkerbell and Neverland. Oh, right. You don't know the story. 
Mother burned all the fairy tale books in the palace before I could read most of them. And nobody would tell me any of the stories. Mother always forbid me from talking about them. Peter Pan is the story of a boy who never grows up. He's a accompanied by a fairy friend named Tinkerbell, and the two of them live together in Neverland. In my case, Tinkerbell is a key that can open Neverland. Neverland is a box, a family heirloom. My shadow is being kept in Neverland. That shadow is my magic. Once I get it back, my curse will break. Magic. I'm a witch, princess. He says it so nonchalantly, like stating what his job is. He and Delora are... the same? I've seen Walsh conjure flowers from thin air before, but I never associated that with the type of magic that witches do. You're a witch, a curse witch. How is that even possible? Only the tin and brown bear has the ability to curse another witch. It's why I can only do simple magic nowadays. I'm really proud of you for being able to read that word because it took me like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I was that. like, ten, ten <laughs> If I ever want to cast proper spells again, I'm going to need to find Tinkerbell and Neverland. You don't know where Tinkerbell and Neverland are? No, I don't. Does that mean you're stuck in this form forever? Uh, how about a story? And we will tell that story next time. And thank you guys so much for watching. And Austin, thank you so much for joining me. And yeah, I think that's yep, that about nice does it. To, nice to be there, guys. Bye. Oh, bye, guys. <laughs>